Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Sharif Al Gamal, and today we'll continue our videos about the reinforced concrete design. Within this video, we'll be learning about the analysis of singly reinforced rectangular sections. So just follow uh, me, and you will learn how to de de analyze such sections. Let's assume we have a bridge like this one, and we have cars and trucks passing uh, above this bridge. So for that bridge, you will have two options. The first one is to design the bridge. And the second option is to analyze. Design, we use it when we have uh, to build a new structure. So we need to design the structure from the beginning, knowing the cross-section dimensions and get the area of the steel reinforcement. So in the design, the cross-section dimensions will be unknown. Area of the steel will be unknown. So what is given in such a case, the given will be the load, like a truck load. And from this truck load, we can calculate the uh, ultimate moment on the cross section. So the given here will be the load or the moment and the required to get the cross section dimensions and also to get the area of the steel reinforcement inside that cross section. For the design, we did it in uh, our uh, previous video. You can check the video from this link. The second one, which will be included in this video, it will be the analysis. Analysis, it means you have an exist existing structure and you know the dimension is given, area steel is known because it is an existing structure and you need to analyze it to get the capacity of that bridge. So how much it will be the load that can be carried by that bridge. How much it will be the weight of the truck that can go through that bridge. So in the analysis case, the given will be the cross-section dimension. Uh, area steel also will be given and the required, it will be the capacity of the cross-section or the load that can go through that bridge or that beam or that structure. Within this video, we'll be learning how to analyze a uh, singly reinforced rectangular section. After that, we'll go to doubly reinforced rectangular sections and also flanged sections in coming videos. So the analysis steps of singly reinforced rectangular section, we will go through like very clear analysis. As you know, the given will be the dimensions, area steel, and all, of course the uh, concrete compressive strength and the yield strength of the steel reinforcement. Uh, required, it will be the ultimate moment of resistance, M ultimate, and also we can ask for uh, the maximum load that can be carried by uh, a beam or a bridge or any uh, structural element. So the first step, we have to assume that the steel yields. According to different codes, including the bridge standard, uh, the good design requires that uh, the section will be under reinforced section. It means the steel will yield first before the concrete crush. So our first assumption, we assume that this section is designed well, and therefore the steel will be yielding. Assuming the steel will be yielding, it means the stress in the steel FST equals 0.95F yield. And from making equilibrium between the two horizontal forces here, we'll be able to get the unknown, which is S here. So we'll say equilibrium between the compression and the tension force. The compression, as we explained in previous videos, equals to maximum stress, 0.45 FCU, times B times S. And the tension equals FST times AST. And we assume that the steel will yield, so this FST will be equals to 0.95 F field. So make equilibrium between these two forces and then rearrange and solve for getting the S. So let's get the S equals 0.95 area of the tension steel multiplied by the yield strength of the tension steel divided by 0.45 FCU times B, which is the width of the rectangular cross section. By doing that, we'll be able to get the S so once we get the S, we can get the X, which is the distance from the compression to the neutral axis, equals S divided by 0.9, so we can get the X. After we get the S and the X, let's check if our first assumption in step number one is correct or not. Let's check if the steel yields or if the steel does not yield. How to do that? 
we can check it using one of the following two methods. The first one from the strain distribution, from uh, similarity of triangles here, we can calculate the strain in the tension steel. And if the strain in the tension steel uh, is greater than uh, the yield strain of the steel reinforcement, which is 0 0.002 in case of 460 uh, steel. Uh, therefore, if the strain in the steel is greater than the yield strain, it means the tension steel yields. So our assumption will be correct. The second method to do that, we can compare the X with the X balanced. If the X balance, the X we calculated here is less than X balanced, which is 0.615D. So it means also the tension steel yields and our first assumption is correct and the calculation of S and X also, they are correct. Okay, so assume tension steel yields, calculate S, calculate X, then we can check if the tension steel yields or not. If the X is less than X balanced, which is the easier way to make your check, it means your assumption is correct and then you can go for uh, calculating the uh, capacity of the, the cross section. The capacity of the cross section can be calculated by taking a moment at the compression side or even at the tension side. Let's take it as a compression side in this case. So if you take a moment here equals force times uh, lever arm, force times distance. So the capacity M ultimate equals F capital ST, which is 0.95 F yield AST times Z. And Z in this case equals the total depth effective depth minus S over two. So this distance Z equals D minus S over two. And from this equation, you can get the moment in Newton millimeter. If you want to get it in kilo Newton meter divided by 10 to power six, okay? This is assuming that the tension steel is already yielded and we check that the steel is yielding. But you may have another case. In step number two, if you checked the steel yielding or not, and you found that the steel is not yielding, if you found that the X is greater than X balanced, or the strain in the tension steel is less than the yield strain. So this means that the tension steel is not yielding. So what to do in this case? Uh, if the tension steel is not yielding, it means the first assumption in step number one is not correct. And therefore, the S and the X that we calculated also, they are not correct. So we have to recalculate S and X again. So recalculate X, but in this case, the value of FST, we will get it from uh, strain distribution here. So FST equals the modulus or elasticity of the steel times the strain, and the strain we can get it from the strain distribution. So by multiplying the uh, modulus or elasticity, 200,000, multiplied by the strain, which is this value, we can get it from this equation, 700 times D minus X over X. And then again, we'll make equilibrium, uh, equilibrium compression force equals the tension force. The compression force, no change, as we did in the first step. The change here, it will be the area ST times FST, and FST will be 700 D minus X over X. And you, from this equation, you can solve and you can get the value of x. Once we get the x, no need again to check anymore because we know that the steel is not yielding. Once we get x, we can go directly to calculate the capacity of the cross section m ultimate. And in this case, let's calculate it from the compression side, FCC times z, FCC equals 0.45 FCUB times 0.9x, which is s, times d minus s over 2. If someone said, okay, why we do not calculate the uh, capacity from the tension side? We take a moment here. Yes, you still can take the moment here. It will be FST times AST. But in this case, don't uh, substitute FST by 0.95 F yield. You have to calculate the stress in the steel reinforcement as is. And it will be less than the yield strength uh, of the steel reinforcement. So it is easier and just not to not get confused when you have the steel is not yielding, so it is better to calculate it from the capacity from the compression side, FCC times Z, which is D minus S over two, okay? So these are three easy steps uh, you can follow to analyze any uh, singly reinforced rectangular section, calculating S by making equilibrium, checking and calculating the capacity. If the steel is not yielding, we have to recalculate S again, 
and we replace the stress in the steel by 700 times d minus x over x and then calculate x again and then we calculate the capacity of the cross section okay let's uh, understand this more by uh, solving two examples together the first example here we have a cross section rectangular cross section with a width 300 millimeter area of the steel is given the effective depth is 520 millimeter so what is required it is required to determine the ultimate moment of resistance of the cross section if the cu is given and if the yield is given so it is a straightforward problem the first step we assume the stress in the steel equals 0.95 F yield. It means we assume the steel is yielding and then we'll make equilibrium between the compression and the tension to get the S. Make equilibrium, so F sub CC equals F sub ST. And by making equilibrium, this is the compression, F CC. This is the tension in the steel. The only unknown will be S, so we can calculate the S. So the S equals 159 millimeter. Once we calculate the S, we can calculate the X, just divide the S by 0.9. So it will be 177 millimeter. So this is the first step. We assume the steel is yielding, make equilibrium, get S and X. Then let's check if the uh, steel is yielding as we assumed or not. So in this case, I will do it by uh, making uh, strain from the strain distribution here. So from the similarity of triangles, you can say the horizontal value here, 0 0.0035 divided by epsilon st. So the horizontal divided by the horizontal equals this distance, which is x divided by the distance here, which is d minus x. Rearrange and get the strain in the steel reinforcement equals 0 0.0035 d minus x over x substitute the d with the value 520 which is this value here and x is the value that we calculated in step number one and x again so we can get the strain in the steel reinforcement the strain here equals 0 0.0067 this value is it greater than the yield strain or less than the yield strain it is much greater than the yield strain because the yield strain of the steel uh, reinforcement is about 0 0.002 and the value that we have 0 0.006, so it is much greater than the yield. So it means the steel is yielding and our assumption that the steel is yielding is correct. Then we can go directly to the last step and calculate the capacity. So the capacity of the section equals FST times Z. FST is 0.95 F yield AST. Z is D minus S over two. So substituting the values, we can get the capacity is 287 times 10 to power 6 Newton millimeter. And if you want to get it as kilonewton meter, just remove the divide by 10 to power 6. So the capacity of that section is 287 kilonewton meter. This is our first example. Let's take another example with uh, a small difference here. The cross section is the same, but the only change we have uh, more steel reinforcement. So the area of the steel reinforcement in this case is 3,000 millimeter square. The rest is the same. So let's again, doing the first step, assume that the tension steel is yielding and we make equilibrium between the compression and the tension force. And once we do that, we can get the S, the S in this case equal 324 millimeter. And we can calculate the x, x equals s over 0.9, so it is 360. Because we increase the area of the steel, the x also is increasing compared to the previous example, example number one. Now, let's check if the steel is yielding or not. Okay, we can make it from the strain distribution. The strain in the steel equals 0 0.0035 d minus x over x. So we found that the strain in the steel is 0 0.001. 0 0.001, of course, it is less than the yield strain, which is 0 0.002185. So it means that the steel is not yielding. The strain in the steel is less than the yield strain. So it means the steel is not yielding. Then our first assumption that the steel is yielding is not correct. And then we have to, again, recalculate the S and recalculating the X. To do that, we uh, calculate the stress in the steel reinforcement equals the modulus elasticity times the strain and just substituting by these values this will be 700 d minus x over x then we can get the 
force in the steel reinforcement, the tension force in the cross section equals the stress times area. So it is 700 D minus X over X times the area of the steel. This will be the tension force. We substitute the value of D and AST and the remaining value only will be the X. Let's make equilibrium now. FCC equals FST. So FCC as uh, usual 0.45 FCU times B times S equal the force in the tension steel, which is coming from this equation. And now we'll substitute all the values. The only unknown will be the value of X. Okay, so substituting the values, everything is known except the value of X. This will result in a quadrat equation of X. So something X squared plus something X plus or minus constant equal to zero. We solve this equation and we get the X in this case is 330.5 millimeter. Once we calculate the X, no need to make any check again. We just go to the last step by calculating the capacity of the cross section. And because the steel is not yielding, so it is better and easier to get the capacity from the compression side equals F capital CC times Z. And substituting the values of uh, FCC 0.45, FCU 30, B is 300, S is 0.9X that we calculated here, times D minus uh, 0.45x, so d minus 0.45x, which is uh, s over 2, and we divided by 10 to power 6 to get it directly in kilonewton meter, and we found that the capacity of the cross section is 444.5 kilonewton meter. So you can see here, once we increase the area of the steel reinforcement, the capacity of the section increased compared to the capacity of the section number one. However, Yes, the capacity increased, but the section now, if it will fail, it will fail in compression, which is not also recommended by the code. So don't increase the reinforcement to increase the capacity of the section. You can do that, but you have to ensure that your section will not fail in compression and will still un be under reinforced section. Okay, otherwise the failure will be a catastrophic failure without any warning. Thank you for watching. The coming uh, videos will be talking about uh, design and analysis of doubly reinforced rectangular section. Thank you and goodbye.